So today we're gonna replace the pressure switch. The pressure switch on this furnace gotten stuck open like two or three times. As you can see right now, uh, the furnace is actually working. But you always wanna check your vent before you check your pressure switch because if there's debris in there, or ice or anything like that, oops, uh, that can cause the pressure switch to not open and close properly. So you gotta verify that you've got good airflow, which we, we definitely do here. So the switch in question is this one right here. You can see it's a 0 .30 uh, inches of water column, which is such a super slight vacuum. And what we wanna do is verify that we're actually getting that vacuum. Obviously, we are, because it's satisfied. If I unplug this, though, it'll drop the burner out just like so. So we're going to measure the vacuum on this tube using a manometer. So you can see when we measure on that, we're getting negative 1.7, which is more than adequate to pull that switch closed. So now we can unplug it, and plug it back into the switch. They said that they had to come down and like jiggle on it twice during the night, so they just would like it replaced although it is technically still working right now. Um, when I had come and look at, looked at it before, I actually thought that we had a plugged piece of tubing right here. You have to inspect your tubing all the way along here. If it's cracked or loose or has any kind of restriction, including in this nipple that goes through into the combustion blower, then you can end up having uh, the pressure switch is not reliably open and close. This system actually has three. One that interrupts the common side of the gas valve here. That one is a .10. And then they have a pair. They don't always have a pair. Sometimes they're just two. Sometimes they're just one pressure switch. This one is a .75 and that one is a Point three zero. So one is a high fire pressure switch and one is a low fire pressure switch. So you can see it's going to go ahead and light. Right now I'm guessing it's running in the low stage. Still drawing 1.42. So this one right here, if you look on here it says low fire. Low fire. And right here it's high fire. So that's why there's a pair of pressure switches there. They want to verify it during the lower speed and verify it during the higher speed on the combustion blower to make sure that they're getting it properly. And we were having issues with the low fire switch um, being open when it was supposed to close. So we're going to go ahead and change that out. We're going to be using a universal pressure switch. And I'll show you how we actually do that here. There's several different springs and we have to test it and verify that it opens and closes at the right pressure. For the unit, we're basically going to select and install a spring and select and install an orifice. These are the springs that it comes with and these are the, I think they're actually called restrictors that come with it. And then of course we have this Allen key for adjustment. And if we look back here, there's actually a chart. So the spring selection, we're going to be in the 0.1 through 0.30 because we're at the 0.30. So we're going to use the black spring. So using the flow restricting orifice, um, it's only on some applications that you actually need that. And you would look at the diameter of the one that you're replacing and install one of the new ones that came with the kit. This particular pressure switch does not have any restricting orifice so we don't need that and what that basically does is it causes a delay of the switch actually acting so the board will start the blower and then it knows that approximately three seconds later the switch would close this one would close probably a little bit more immediately than one with a restricting orifice so we're not going to be installing that but if you do need it um, the instructions here do lay that out for installing it and they kind of actually say that you have to refer to this other bulletin to get a little more details but from what I understand, you just need to replace it with the same diameter as the one that you're installing. Again, that's these little colored things here, and they just restrict the 
amount of air that can actually get into the switch. This is the black one. So I just take the spring, lay it into the back of the switch. And then you take the plug and the key and you just get this started. You can see this is the normally closed position, this is the normally open position. It said that it's going to be in the normally open position when you start off and you have to tighten this down until it switches. So with that tightened down that amount, we now know that the normally closed switch is closed. The normally open one is open. So that's our baseline now for adjusting this. So you now need to have the manometer teed onto the line. You have to have the switch in the vertical position like this. Um, and you don't want to have them super different like distances. You want to have them pulling you know, about the same distance so that the pressure reading is pretty accurate. And now we can turn on the combustion blower and we'll check the contacts between here and here. We should have nothing. And we can see that came on, that came on too soon. I think we want to loosen this a little bit. It's open right now. There we go. Test it one more time here. But see, I'm just checking continuity between these two here. So it's still closed, still closed, still closed. Once the blower stops and it stops moving air, it should reopen. Right there, it reopened. Go ahead and turn this on. Oops. Just checking between these contacts here. There it is. So you saw how once we went past our proper um, rating on our old switch of 0.3, that's when the switch closed and that's what we want. So now we'll get this mounted up in there. It does need to be in this position. and. You could put a glob of hot glue on the back in case uh, you don't want anyone to change the adjustment. I usually don't worry about that because it doesn't seem to have ever been a problem for me of people doing that. The terminals on here are the wider style and the ones on our existing switch are the narrower style. So you would actually have to change the ends of these. But I'll show you what I actually prefer to do. Um, the instructions don't say to do this, but this is what I typically do. Uh, I just take my tin snips and I get on the switch and I just cut not all the way through, but I just cut like a, a slot like that. And then it's actually really nice for troubleshooting because you can put your testers onto these little probes that stick out. So I just leave them like that. And now we can now we can actually plug these terminals right back on here. And I actually like to leave the old pressure switch in the unit so that someone else can see what size was supposed to be there in case it ever comes out of adjustment or something. But yeah, we'll go ahead and get this all neatly tied up there and then uh, confirm that the furnace is working as it should. They actually do send with the kit a couple of adapters for mounting it in there and some screws. In this case, the old switch is mounted to this other switch that is still being used, so I've just got both of those there, and then they can tell kind of what's going on. Uh, they, as in another service technician, can tell what's going on. Oh, I actually put this on the wrong terminal. I need to put this one over onto here, onto the normally open. Now here we'll go with the startup. Heard the switch close. And so it should go right into an ignition sequence. I just heard the blower drop into its lower speed. And 
and I already pulled and cleaned the flame sensor and did a clean and tune, checking all the condensate tubing and all of that um, previously to make sure it wasn't something else affecting this switch up in here. But uh, yeah, that should take care of it. So it does take some kind of unique tools in order to get this installed properly. And it is pretty it is pretty important that you actually make sure it is shutting off and or opening and closing at the right pressures. You don't want to just guess. Um, the pressure switches are pretty important for making sure that the furnace isn't gonna produce carbon monoxide because they just monitor the airflow through the whole thing and keep everything safe. So that's why they're in there. While we're on the subject of pressure switches, you can see this one here is a 0.110 and this one is to indicate a blocked drain. It goes right down to the bottom right where it drains out. So if it backs up from the condensate being plugged anywhere along there, then this switch will not open or close. And this one right here is the air proving. So this one goes directly to the combustion blower and it makes sure that verifies that the combustion blower is indeed actually running and it's moving the correct amount of air. So any restrictions in this pipe or um, damage to the actual blower wheel inside there could prevent this switch from opening. This has to move the right amount of air.